Okay. Well, I'll start sharing my screen. Um, can you guys see my screen? Okay. All right. Well, AI actions, the great thing about them, if you are familiar with um, edit mode and you like editing photographs in layers, um, for example, in comp composite photography is really, um, or graphic design is really useful to have layers because you can add elements and, and affect elements in different ways in your photos. And so the whole point of the AI action is that with one click, you can get a fairly complicated um, edit in your photo. Um, and as we'll see in the, in the workshop, sometimes they work really well. For example, they remove the background really well, like in this case. And other times, they don't work so well, but even if they don't um, right off the bat give you a really good edit, it's such a time saver because it, it does do the majority of the work and it's very easy to edit um, the selection, thus making AI actions a really, really great starting tool um, for more complicated edits. So why don't we just do a little overview as we just saw, with one click, I can remove my background fairly easily. And as you'll see to the right, what Ultimate does is that it creates a mask. Um, I can edit the feathering of my mask to make the borders more transparent. But in this case, um, it uh, works really, really well. And of course, I could drag a layer to the bottom of my image. And then because I removed the background, um, the layer on the bottom will be showing. So I clicked on remove background, but because it created a mask, I can invert my mask. So if I invert my mask, now I can see the background and not the subject. And I could do some kind of trippy edits like this one. So it's really cool because you can get creative really fast um, just with uh, starting with AI actions. Okay, so let's go back. What about select subject? Um, Select subject is basically the same thing as remove background, but inverted. So the nice thing about select subject is that I can edit my selection as we'll see in a couple more examples later. And again, I can, for example, after I have my subject selected, I could, let's say, hit on one of the effects, let's say curves, and this will affect only my subject. Um, what about select sky? Do you guys use select sky? Oh, um, for the people who do use AI actions, which, which is the one that you find using the most? I want to know. Sky select, yeah, subject, cool. Um, okay, so moving on, select sky, same thing as select subject, but um, ultimate will select the sky. And of course, there'll be moments where it'll be pretty good on the details. Actually, in this, in this photo works really well. We can see that um, the selection um, is able to to go through um, the details of the house. And with Select Sky, again, um, because I have 
this guy selected, I can create a mask, invert my mask, and if I want it, I could replace this guy by dragging another layer and put it on the bottom of my layer panel. Sky behind windows not selected. You're right. And what's cool about um, just the selection in general is that we can add to our selection or we can uh, remove from our selection. So in this case, if we wanted to add um, these spaces right here, all you have to do is go and select the brush tool. And I can, oh, sorry. It's kind of annoying how um, Zoom blocks my, blocks the my menu on the top. Okay, here here we go. So the brush selection tool I can use to add to my selection. So you got to be somewhat careful, of course, but that's the nice thing about having a selection um created in its almost 100% correct and then you can edit the selection of course um okay what about blur background this is a tricky photo because there is a subject which is this poppy right here but um Let's see, let's see if it's able to handle the background, be able to blur the background. Were you guys able to see the difference? So that's pretty cool. But with blur background, we don't have so much um, flexibility into how much blur we want to add. Um, or what kind of blur we could add, but as we'll see uh, later on, with select sky, uh, sorry, with select subject, we are able to create um, a more fine tuned or customizable background. So, what about black and white background? So it does it does um, a really good job. The you can see these photos. Maybe they're not so popular anymore, but they used to be to have your your subject um, in full color with the background in black and white. So as you can see, it works really well. Um, another thing I wanted to mention before I forget is that, where's my, um, let me just find a photo is that the select sky um, effect also um, has also affects the reflections, for example, in water. So let me just bring that photo in because I have a, I don't know why I didn't add it right here on the bottom. One second. Okay. Okay, for example, on this image, if I click select sky, it wouldn't make sense if I wanted to, let's say, change the exposure of my sky or the tone or the white, white balance, not to change what's happening on the bottom. So select sky in that regard can become really useful. And again, with the curves, I could make the sky a little bit more dramatic with the reflections on the water um, as well. So that can become really useful when you wanna create more of an impact. So that's how it was before, and this is how it is after. Okay, but what things can we do 
with AI actions that even though they are small adjustments, they can create a big difference. So I have this image, which is a beautiful image. And I might, I might think that um, maybe I would want my subject in the photo just to have a slightly more exposure. And going and selecting uh, my subject manually would be very complicated. So I can just click on select subject. And um, I really, what I, one of the things I really like to do, and maybe you guys um, find this tip valuable too, is I like to copy. So once I have my selection created, I'll hit Control C and then Control V. And as you can see, on my layer panel, my selection now is a new layer with a transparent background. So if you wanted, you could, you could, you know, you could create something trippy if you wanted. Um, but um, you can also add any adjustment layer. So I will add exposure. And of course, if I add exposure just on top of my other two layers, both layers will be affected by the exposure. But if right next to the I uh, button, you'll see this rhomboid uh, shape. If you click on it, it'll clip this mask, this layer to the bottom layer, affecting only this layer and not what's below it. So. That's zero. That's how our subject looked originally. And if I just increase it very slightly, only to 39, we can see that it does make a difference. It makes the subject a little bit more clear. And so that's a really awesome way to use um, select subject for small adjustments. Let's, let's try it again on another image. So this is a tricky image, um, and I wish I could see her um, with a little bit more exposure, of course. So I'll go ahead and do exactly the same. Click on Select Subject. It does a pretty good job at selecting um, even the hairs um, around her. And then again, I'll hit Control-C, Control-V. Commit and add an exposure layer above. Before I start editing the levels of my exposure, I'll just clip my mask just to her and I'll start adjusting. So I'll increase the exposure and now I probably need to add a bit more contrast as well. So let's see the difference. So that's before, and this is after. Slight changes that can really um, improve your photos uh, so much. So that's um, it's a really um, fast way to, especially if you're taking portrait photography um, or photos of your family and you want them um, to have more light in them, then this is a really um, good way to do it. So let's try to replace the sky on this image. And when I do that, you'll see that we'll encounter a pretty common um, problem or issue when we are trying to replace the sky or when we're trying to make the sky with more exposure or less exposure. You guys, you guys will see what I'm talking about in just a second. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select the sky. I'm going to create a mask, invert my mask, 
so that I have my subject selected or sorry, the opposite, but my subject is visible and my sky is transparent. I'll bring another sky into my image, click on commit and bring it to the bottom. So what do you guys think? What's, what's the issue here? It's not so obvious, but you can see it around the statue. Exactly. We can see some remnants of the previous uh, sky or, you know, um, those corners there make our photo really hard um, to make it believable. And you will find that this, this might happen on many other situations. And there's a way around it. So let's go back to our original image. We'll select this guy again. And now we'll go to the select menu and click on refine. So this will bring us to the refine menu where we'll, we're able to shift the edge of our selection, either make our selection grow outwards or inwards. So I'm going to be very slight and probably just stay there at 11. Maybe I'll do for probably 14. You can add some feathering, but in this case, we want it to be very more detailed. Um, so let's see if that helps us. Let's see if we can get rid then of fringing. And even though it might not be perfect, it might work for us. And that's the thing. You, the best way to, to figure out if it works is just to try. I'll bring, oh, oh, the, I, made a, I made a mistake, which is that I forgot to, I forgot to mask my sky. So let's go ahead and do that again. We'll go to refine. We'll increase the shift edge. Let's try 13. Feathering, maybe just three. Click done. And now I won't forget to add a layer mask to it. I'll invert my layer mask. So the red is showing what I have selected and which in this case is now transparent. I'll bring my new sky to the bottom. Let's see if it made any difference. I think it does a pretty good, it does a really good job. Now, we might have some transparency when you go really close, but if you look at the image as a whole, the corners around the statue um, are a lot better. So what else can we do to make the image pop more and also maybe make the color of our preview statue match um, the tones of the sky above? Well, we can start off by adjusting the white balance of our statue. So I'm going to add a white balance adjustment layer. And again, I'll clip it just to my statue and I'll make it slightly colder, but also more pink. Actually, I can make it warmer and pink. And that is matching the tones a lot better. So that's before and this is after. Maybe I could reduce the exposure of my sky. And to do that, I'll do that again. I'll select the layer of my clouds and then I'll click exposure. And as you can see, the exposure layer is just above the pink clouds um, layer 
meaning that it won't affect anything above it. So now I'm reducing the exposure in the sky. And now we have a pretty dramatic uh, image uh, compared to what we had before. So um, that's, that's, that's very important to whenever you're replacing skies that you pay attention to the edges and then you might be able to fix the issue with um, refining the edges. So, okay, we've seen situations where the AI um, is very capable of of selecting this guy, but what what if it, you know, what if it doesn't do such a good job? Let's see what happens here. So if I click select sky. you'll see that in this situation, it's not working so well. Because the red is marking my selection, there I can see that there's a bunch of clouds that are not selected. The edges around the, the building are not, or around the church are not the best, and it's even selecting um, inside the church. So if I was gonna go ahead and add a layer mask, we would see that is not a great selection. And so another tip that is very useful is because select subject and select sky, what they're doing is basically the same. I could either select the sky on this photo, but I could also select the building. And selecting the building might help me adjust the sky and the building and same the same thing vice versa. It's all about inverting or not inverting the mask that you add to um, your layer. So let's see what happens if I if I click on select subject. It might do a better job. It still needs some work, but I think it's a little bit better. So why don't I? make the selection, fix the selection. So I'm going to go and select my brush selection tool. And with the right click, I can take out or deselect parts of my image. So bear with me while I do this. This would be a really great moment to add some background music. I'm just going to do a fairly quick job, but one of the nice things about photo editing is that it can be as relaxing as you want and you can take your time. Do you guys find uh, satisfying the process of editing photos? How many of you find it more satisfying than frustrating? And how many of you guys find it frustrating or more frustrating? I guess it depends on your, your skills and yeah, me too. Frustrating, <laughs> yeah, it can be frustrating. Thanks uh, for joining Maurice. You, you'll be able to watch the, the full workshop later. It's a satisfying frustration. Well, if you have a lot of frustration and then you're able to figure it out, I guess it makes it a lot more satisfying. So I guess the frustration and satisfaction communicate with each other. So I deselected um, the areas around my building. And now to um, select the rest of my building, with my left click, I'll just complete the building. Yeah, I agree with you, Chris. Um, I guess it depends on what kind of photography you do because, and, and you know, it's, it's all about um, your proper, your, your personal style. A lot of, a lot of people that, that make composite photography enjoy the fact of adding layers and 
cre- creating some sort of a more um, less reflective of reality could be um, image. Uh, or sometimes you just want to fix the light or things in your image. Okay, so... Um, hmm. Oh, that's interesting. It might be a, a thing of the Zoom that it cannot see the cursor. But, but what I basically did... Can you see the cursor now? Can you see the brush um, right now? The, the little circle? Yeah. So, um, cool. I mean, so for example, I added this by mistake just here. Um, and now, and I did that with my left click and I can remove it with my right click. Were you guys able to see that? That's strange. I'll reshare my screen. So you can't see the red in the selection. Oh, okay, you can. Hmm, that's odd. Well, anyways. So you so if I add this red line, oh okay. Thanks, Barb. Well, let's move on. So I now have um selected my building, and I think what I'd like to do, I'll copy and paste um my building selection on top as a new layer, and I'll just add slightly more exposure to it. Again, if I don't click on this little shape right here, the exposure will affect both layers on the bottom. But if I click this, I'll affect only what I have below. So just adding slightly more exposure to my building, just like that. And I could reduce the exposure of my sky by adding an exposure layer right on top of the church. Do you guys have any questions so far of, of, of what we've seen? Um, we're going to move now towards um, blurring, which is becomes very useful too. Here's another image that has a reflection. Why don't we see if I click select sky? Let's see if if it is able to. Yeah, so again, it's selecting the sky and selecting my reflection. I can add this little areas here that were not added in the selection before. And with the curves, I could make the sky and the reflection of the sky in the lake seem brighter or darker. Okay, let's let's move on to blurring the background. So as we saw earlier, if we just click on blur background, we can have a pretty good result, but we don't have any way to tweak it or to adjust the value of it. So what can we do in that case? Well, we just need to select our subject. We can copy and paste so that it creates a new layer. Select the background. And go to 
our left filter menu panel and click on blur. Whoops. So this is cool because um, ACDC does a really good uh, job at, at offer. Uh, it has many possibilities for, for blur. So the Gaussian blur is one of the most classic blurs, which is the one that it actually applies when you do blur background. And now because we separated our subject from our background through the layers, now we're able to fine tune the, back, uh, the blur in the background. You can choose all kinds of blurs. Can get things can get a little crazy. Let's try another one. Let's see what happens here. What if I blur just click blur background? It 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 gave it a really nice blur actually. Probably not, it's not a big, big change, but it's a slight change that is good. Okay, that's good to know, Chris. Thanks for, for joining. Um, okay, let's do the same thing. Let's see if... Uh, okay, well, the selection is doing a really good job, but I can see that it's missing some areas, right? particularly here. So we could go ahead and, and did the same of what we did before, which is refine. But because parts of the selection are actually really good, if we shift the edges of the selection, then we would be shifting the parts that are correct as well. So here's where the... Um, here's where the brush tool becomes really useful again. I can select the brush tool and select the option, the magic option in smart brushing. So what magic does is magic. It'll detect, as you see, can you see my cursor? The point on my cursor I am able to place it exactly where I want to add more of the selection. And the magic setting on the smart brushing will take into account um, color, will take into account exposure. And I don't have to be so careful, painfully careful, to select the edges because I can rely on the technology in this situation. Hmm. Can you see that I'm incorporating selection in the red area to the to the image? Can you see that? Not visible. That's a shame. We'll have to figure that out for next time. Oh, yeah, I can actually notice what you guys are saying. Um, maybe if I zoom in more, it'll be easier to see what I'm talking about. Well, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But um, anyways... So I refined my selection using the brush selection tool. And now I will again do Control C, Control V. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a thing with the Zoom um, interface. So I can run some other tests and see if it keeps happening. Um, okay, so now I have my subject in a separate layer. And let's go ahead to 
the blur option. And I wanted to do this one because I think it like really works for this, for the kind of the style of this photo. Um, this particular uh, radial blur, right? Can give this pretty edgy and, and cool kind of effect. And you can change how it goes clockwise or counterclockwise. You can add more or less. And we can add bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. I think it's, uh, people pronounce it bokeh. Um, again, um, the awesome thing about AI Actions is that it allows you to um, create the first step into more uh, deeper ed edits, um, more complicated edits, um, which can make a big change in your image. So that's how it looked before and how it looks after. So I don't know if you guys have seen this short tutorial. Um, I did upload it into the Bokei, Bokai, Japan, Boka, USA. Yeah. In Spanish, I guess we would call it Boke. But um yeah, I don't I don't I don't I actually don't know if there's um some sort of agreement on which is the way to pronounce it. So this image, um, there is a short tutorial where I show how we can add bokeh to the background of this photo. Um, and I think it could really benefit because we got these pretty Christmas lights in the background and we could use um, some separation um, from the subject against the background. So why don't we increase a little bit of the exposure of her, maybe reduce a little bit the exposure in the background and then add um, some bokeh to the background. So before we do that, why don't we just check what blur background does? It creates a pretty, really decent job. So that's before and that's after. But of course, if we want to be more detailed in our edits, we're going to go through the select subject route. OK, so um, I can see that there's a finger. Um, that's a good question. Why don't we try? Why don't we try? I think we can. I think we can add more blur multiple times. I don't know if you'd want to do that because um, the tool can get to pretty extreme levels. But let's give it a shot. I'm not quite sure. We'll try. Okay. Hopefully, you guys can see the brush action on this one. There's this little finger who escaped the um, the selection. I'm going to zoom as much as I can to make sure to, so that hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. So I selected on the top left the brush selection tool or a control B. And I'm going to remove my magic selection and I'm just going to do a classic selection. Yeah, I think, oh yeah, there it loaded. I think it, um, oh, so I think I know what's happening. So while I'm applying the brush tool, it's not showing the process. And as you guys were saying, it only shows the result. Now I get it. Now I know what you're saying. But anyways, we were able to add um, the selection of the finger using 
the brush selection tool. I'll click on fit image to go back um, and check out fully our subject. I'm going to copy and paste so that we can have a new layer only with our subject. And I'm going to increase the exposure slightly so that we can see her more clearly. Click on this shape that is going to be able to mask only our subject. And there you have it. Click commit. She is now a little bit more exposed, which does make a big difference. And now that we have our background separated from her, we can go ahead into the blur tool. I don't know why it's taking me immediately to the radial blur. It's a little, little crazy. Um, so that's the Gaussian blur, which is the one we were seeing automatically being applied. But we want to add bokeh. So here you'll find the amount of blur that you want to add. And as Martin, as you were saying, um, yeah, I know, but I, I like I select, I, I think I left, well, I, I guess I was using that one. I was using radial background. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. So as you can see, the amount of blur that you add can be really dramatic, like pretty drastic. Well, it becomes almost an abstract background, but we don't want to add so much, but we do want to um, maybe change how the bokeh is seen in the photo. I think adding a touch of brightness to the bokeh um, is cool. And again, we can also change the shapes of them. So if we wanted to get a little cheesy, we can select hearts. If we want to get more experimental, we can select circles, stars. But why don't we go for a more of a classic bokeh, which we can see in these shapes. So that's how our background looked before, and this is how it looks after. So once you're done applying your blur, you just hit done. And it'll take a little bit of time because it is um, it is a very uh, detailed work adding the extra shapes. It'd be cool if we could time lapse. But while we wait, um, if you guys have any questions. Yeah, so once the lens blur is applied, I'll show you. Um, so the layer that it, it, it was applied to is the background because I separated, I used select, su select subject to separate her from the background. And then I selected the, the background and went to the filter menu and clicked on blur. So that's how I applied the blur only to the background. Do you guys use the AI actions more on portrait photography or maybe nature photography, landscape photography? Where do you guys, uh, find you're using it more. Light on subject, yeah. Phil, when you say um, um Wildlife and birds. What are you usually? What are you usually doing? Are you are you blurring the background behind a bird, for example?
sharpening the subject. Yeah. Yeah, making PNG images, of course. Cool. Do you guys ever? Okay. So why don't we just um, try, for example, to make the background of the kitchen have a little bit more blur. Yeah, I, I, I hear you, um, Antoine. Um, there are situations where it works really well right off the bat, but usually you'll find that you will always want to um, edit it a little bit more. So, so that's what that's what's cool about uh, select sky, select subject, is that it does allow you to to fine tune. For example, if you wanna be a purist, the blur background in this photo, that's, it does give a nice effect, but it's not entirely real in the sense that why wouldn't the milk jug or the eggs be in focus if they're almost exactly at the same distance between the camera as as the kit. And so in this case, blur background won't be able to give us an exact um, representation of what a real background or I mean, a real blurred background would happen in, in photography. And we can see what it's actually doing or how it's selecting the background by selecting the subject And realizing that um, everything else that is not the subject is being applied a blur. So because now we know how to expand our selections, we can add the area that we don't want to get blurred on the bottom. And again, I'm noticing that it's not updating. Maybe if I zoom in, that'll change, hopefully. It does take a while. It's like lagging a little bit. But what I'm doing is basically what we've been doing to our other images, which is adding or taking from our selection. I'm just going to do a fairly quick job here and see if maybe by doing this and then we do some blurring of the background, it'll give us a more realistic Okay. There, they're updated. Oh, I can see that his head could be better selected, his face. Just like that. Remember, with right click, you can take away from your selection and with your left click, you add to your selection. You will also find yourself needing to change the feathering so that you can make more precise edges. That's good enough. So 
One more time. Control C, Control V. And now we have little Robert by himself. If I remove the background layer, you'll see that now we have the milk jug, the glass, and the table in front of him in our selection, which was not possible when we blurred the background just with the just like that. So now if I only want to blur the background, I have to make sure that I select my bottom layer. And then go ahead to the left and click blur. Right, so now it's it has saved my presets from before. And I'm just going to not, I don't want it to be so dramatic. Have you tried using less brush pressure on the items closer? Oh, yeah, ex yeah, um, right. So if I like increase feathering, it'll make it more of a like a gradient almost, right, of the selection, and it'll it'll um, it'll make it smoother. But so now I just added not a ton of blur because it would look very unrealistic, just a little bit, and so that's how it looked before. And this is how it looks after with our table, Robert and the milk jug and, and glass fully in focus. Oh, really sorry, uh, Catherine, but don't worry. The So this uh, workshop will be available um, on the free workshop space. Um, so free workshops are available on the past workshops tab inside the free workshop space on our community and they're available there for two weeks so um make sure that that you're able to to take a look at it and 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 you'll be able to to see what what we showcase here um also um thanks peter for joining i i hope it it was helpful um so tomorrow there's another workshop. Um, it is an exclusive workshop though, so it's in the premium plan, but it's uh, it takes work with layers um, a couple of steps for more. Um, what we've seen right now is how to work with layers and AI actions to um, change the sky, change the exposure of the sky or change the exposure of only our subject, um, blur the background, um, adjust the selection of our subject or of our sky using the brush tool. Um, and Alec will be doing tomorrow a compositing, composite photography workshop. So he'll probably take it a lot uh, further, um, creating some pretty fun and interesting um, pieces of photographic work. So, so yeah. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, wow, that would be that would be cool, Antoine, to have um, you know, an ultimate ultimate uh, version adapted to to a tablet. I don't know. I can't I can't say what what kinds of things they're cooking um, on the back end, but. Um, Pretty sure that some some cool stuff will will happen. Thanks, Martin. Thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to talk to the cooks uh, more and more. So I'm excited about Luxia. We're releasing it very soon. I don't know if you guys were able to check out the the workshop. Um, we. Um, I love video editing and and been working on a couple of videos um, showcasing and making some tutorials on that. So, okay, well, great. That's really good to hear. And yeah, so AI actions are only available <clears throat> on ACDC Ultimate. So. Yes, the free workshops are available for two weeks, and then they are all 
posted on the premium plan. Um, but we do upload upload them to YouTube as well. So if you guys follow um, ACDC on YouTube, if you don't, you should because there's a bunch of resources there too. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really. Um, I'm happy to. One of the workshops I'll do moving forward with the with Luxia is how to create presentations of your photographic work to make it look dynamic and make it look interesting and and because you know you 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 can create slideshows. You can even create slideshows here on ACDC. But if you really want to fine tune and be, you know, really find the best way to showcase your own work through video that's that's a good it's a good skill or to have there will be some um ai stuff happening in 2024 that i probably cannot talk so much about but there will be um some ai enhancements in 2024 for sure so Okay, guys. Well, that's the time we have for today. Thanks again for joining. Um, if you want, please um, go ahead and, and join the premium plan and join Alec on tomorrow's workshop. And if not, I'll see you soon. I'll start posting more free workshops in our calendar. So stay tuned to all that's happening. And any questions, you can just send me a message on our photo film community. So thanks again. And I'll see you next time. You guys have a great weekend.